Good morning, friends. We are learning our subject that is data visualization. Three one six zero seven one seven, and in that we want to learn module one that is introduction to data visualization. <clears throat> For this subject. we are having few prerequisites they are working knowledge of programming language that you are already having dbms that also you are having javascript html4 and html5 for them i have given you few links here with which you can study all these things but will arrange the lecture for you for almost all these things let us study the chapter 1 let us have the idea about what is data visualization then we'll arrange the lecture for the prerequisite for you this is part of our course outcome 1 that is explain principles of visual perception right we already know that we are having course outcomes defined in our syllabus and this chapter belongs to co1 right few reference books are given here and uh, i'll share the uh, drive link on your classroom where you will be having the books pdf available on that which you can use for this subjects okay let's see the contents of this chapter we want to know about introduction data acquisition visualization applications key factors of data visualization and exploring the visual data spectrum introduction to data visualization data visualization the word the term visualization itself gives us some visual effect isn't it if i think of a peacock what i visualize in my mind a peacock right a beautiful bird with beautiful uh what we can say feathers right dancing in say rain wow beautiful isn't it so when i think of the peacock i visualize in my mind as a peacock beautiful peacock with beautiful feathers and beautiful dancing isn't it yes visualization is the picturization of whatever you think whatever you say right okay so what for we are going to use this data visualization and at least you understand what is data visualization visualization we understand but data visualization that means visualization of data i said that visualization of pico so what we see right so we want to know about data visualization uh, data visualize matlab a table is there where few data is there few columns are there rows are there isn't it that's what we typically visualize but will it give us the idea about that data no so if i have the graph like pie chart i can understand that this many students are there in first class this many are in second class this many are in third class yes isn't it that is what is data visualization is let's see converting Raw data to a form that is 
viewable and understandable to humans the greatest value of a picture is when it forces us to notice what we never expected to see when we are having say excel sheet or we can say sql, uh, SQL uh, database can we understand what it is having you can say yes ma'am we can understand what are the features in it what are the rows what are the columns we can understand that but can you can you say how many people will be there in first class how many in second class how many in third class mm, for that we have to do some processing isn't it yes but after that if we represent that as a picture like pie chart we can understand clearly yes this data is of this form that is this many are in first class this many are in second class this many are in third class right very simple example fine so the greatest value of a picture is when it forces us to notice what we never expected to see fine visualization transforms data into images that effectively and accurately represent information about the data said by the author right the visualization toolkit uh, that is a paper by this particular author data visualization is a graphical representation of information and data data is raw data but information is information is meaningful data right by using visual elements like charts graphs and maps data visualization tools provide an accessible way to see and understand trends outliers and patterns in the data invisible data to visible interpretation let's see turning invisible into visible that people can understand intuitively as for example big data human cannot understand but its chart or graph can easily explain behavior of data right we can see this chart which i was telling you since long here we can see <coughs> student grades where say a says four numbers that is four number of students are there in a grade for b we can say 12 number of students are there in c 10 number of students are there and in d two number of students are there and not only in terms of number of students but in percentage okay so maximum people are there in grade b that's what we can see here right so invisible data see data we cannot visualize right it is not visible means it doesn't mean that we cannot see the excel file we cannot see the sql file we can see that but we cannot visualize it isn't it so from invisible data to visible interpretation in this data we were not able to understand that this many students are there in grade a in grade b in grade c in grade d but when we are having the picture that is a visible interpretation of it we can have the idea right what is visualization do three types of goals 
for visualization one is to explore second is to analyze and the third thing is to present to explore hmm. nothing is known visualization use for data exploration to analyze there are hypotheses this can be there this cannot be there hmm hypothesis it is used for verification and falsification to present everything known about the data that is we can say that visualization used for communication of results so visualization what it does it does or it is used for the three goals one is to explore one is to analyze and one is to present the advantages and benefits of good data visualization first direction the human brains tend to process visual information far more easily than the written information if i give you say few uh, pages of the description of peacock ah uh, you will read it okay peacock is having this color feather then inside that this one is there then it is having this type of uh, beak it is having this type of legs and these and that so i have written say 10 pages to describe the peacock but 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 if i give you the picture of it if i give you the video of it you can understand it properly isn't it so that's what we are talking of that fast reaction the human brains tend to process visual information far more easily than written information if i say you um uh, feathers are uh see bluish green okay then in that a uh, dark blue color is there then inner side we are having say red color or yellow color if i see you something like this will you be able to visualize that you can say yes ma'am we can why because you have already seen the feather of a peacock right otherwise you cannot visualize that isn't it so human brains tend to process visual information far more easily than the written information if i show you the picture of feather of peacock you can understand right if i show you the picture or real feather then also you can understand isn't it use of a chart or graph to summarize complex data ensures faster comprehension of relationships than cluttered reports or spreadsheets many spreadsheets are there many reports are there but can we understand very easily no not better than chart or graph right communicate findings in constructive ways obviously yes constructive ways we can communicate very easily pie chart can definitely see you that how many people are there in which grade right if you are having say a uh, <clears throat> line chart for two particular processes will be able to say that whether they are parallel or you can say they both are increasing or they both are decreasing or whatsoever relation between them isn't it understand connection between operations and results whatever operations we are doing and based on that whatever results we are having we can compare isn't it say if we are having for a particular time duration we want to compare what are the benefits i mean to say what are the profits 
in which year in which month we were having the most or you can say best profit we can make the bar graph we can understand it very easily right but if i see the spreadsheet if i see the report from that hmm, i need to see that okay where the maximum is that isn't it where minimum is there or where the relative one is there but if it is picturization if it is graph bar graph we can understand that very easily isn't it and this emerging trends whatever are the emerging trends what we can say are the emerging trends for visualization we are using the charts graphs and we can say more over we can say videos right but we are talking of data visualization right if we are having simple graph we can understand okay in this month uh, it is um, it's a 10k profit next month 20k third month 5k okay so increasing and decreasing right if we are having the video it will be able to show you that it is increasing and decreasing right create new discussion see <clears throat> i told you that from the pie chart we are able to see that how many students are there in grade a in grade b in grade c in grade d right so there i'll see okay for uh, last year say uh, 50% students were there in grade b this time 70% are there mm, yes this is good batch isn't it where the increase in the result is there for that b grade i'll say no no for a grade more students are there so i can definitely say that students are good as well as i may have improved my teaching isn't it so that's what we can see so new discussion we can think of you can say ma'am it is good what to discuss in that it may happen that the result is decrease <coughs> and we need to talk to students what's the problem isn't it machine learning for machine learning also we can use the data visualization <clears throat> explain relation among two variables we can see here see both the variables here we are having two lines they are representing two variables right we can say that <coughs> one variable is increasing with that other variable two is increasing right so we can have the relation between two variables only from seeing this particular figure right picture <clears throat> a visualization pipeline what is that what are the processes which ultimately makes the visualization let's see data acquisition that is data are generated or collected data enhancement that is data are processed <clears throat> visualization mapping that is data are mapped to visual primitives as for example colors or geometry etc then rendering <clears throat> that is nd see we are having n dimensional data when you are having your excel sheet or sql database we can say we are having the n dimensional data but what we will do we will represent that on our paper or our screen and that will be our two dimensional format right so we can say that the images are 
generated so visualization pipeline is having data acquisition that is data is generated or collected collected from say our uh, social media maybe say we are having the automatic remote sensing from that we are having say data generated and collected we are having data enhancement say data enhancement is where we can say data is noisy or it is having outlier or it is having anything any dirty data is that we remove the dirt from it we clean that and we are having the enhancement it may be the case that few data is there in say kilometers for distance others are there in say meters so what we do is we transform that in one format and let's say that all the data is now there in kilometers fine so data enhancement for which we have to do the data processing visualization mapping for that mm, see two variables i am comparing so let us consider one line as blue and other as red a uh, blue line considers the marks in data mining a uh, red line considers uh, marks in data visualization right so what we are doing is we are deciding the colors we are deciding the geometry whether you want to have light whether you want to have the dots whether you want to have anything else right so that's what we are doing and that is visualization mapping and rendering that is from our data 2d images are generated right so as we have seen the visualization pipeline let's see what are the processes in detail so first of all we consider acquire that is obtain the data whether from a file on a disk or a source over the network we parse it provide some structure for the data's meaning and order it into categories categories what sort of categories hmm? we can say marks are there percentages are there right for this particular example it may be any other example right but we parse it suppose we are having our html data so we need to parse and get the data out of it that is the text out of it tag out of it right we filter that is remove all but the data of interest right we filter the data that is of our interest in other things uh what you can say about the data of interest let me say for your class i am having the data about your students wherein i am having your enrollment number your name your address your hobby your marks and many more things but when i want to give you the appreciation certificates like uh, students who are toppers in your class so what will i see whether i'll see your address whether i'll see your hobby no they are of not interest so what i'll see i'll see your percentage marks in your cpi right so so from that we'll be able to create the appreciation certificates for toppers right mine apply information sorry my apply methods from statistics or data mining as a way to discern patterns or place the data in mathematical context represent choose a basic visual model such as a bar graph list or tree refine improve the basic representation to make it clearer and more visually engaging interact add methods or manipulating the data or controlling what features are visible 
acquiring and visualizing data. The first step in visualizing data is to load it into our application. Typical data sources might be a file on disk, stream from a network or digital signal that is for audio or sensor readings. Fine. Unless you own the data and it is recorded in a definable, digitizable format, things can get messy quickly. How do you process weeks of surveillance video? Uh, we are checking of the surveillance video. Where you can see it is there. Say you are having the uh, camera in our college or in our street. So what we do is weeks of videos are there where you want to find whether something was stolen or not. Who has stolen that particular thing, right? So or uh, actually we can say the things are stolen, but that is <clears throat> for one day only where thieves have off your cameras. So you do not have any idea who has stolen. But if you see Wix of videos, you may be able to find people who were found suspicious, right? So what we want to do is how do you process weeks of surveillance videos, right? How does one quantitatively acquire data from an hour-long meeting that involved a verbal discussion, drawings on a whiteboard, and note-taking done by individual participants? How we do that, right? <clears throat> Thus, the acquisition stage covers several tasks that sometimes get complicated. Acquiring stages, unless you are generating your own data, you have to find a good source for the data you want. If data is not mine, then how will I be able to process it? I should have the authentication. Otherwise, I'll not be having that data, isn't it? See, I may be having the data on my disk. If I do not have the data on my disk, I have to take it online. That is by streaming, isn't it? If you don't own the data, you have to make sure you have the right to use it. Right? That's what I say. That is authentication is needed. You may have to go through contortions to extract the data from a web page or other source that wasn't set up to make it easy for your application. You have to download the data, which may present difficulties if the volume is large. Especially if it is fast changing. Let's say that you are having the data that is of social media. <clears throat> say uh, Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, whatever you consider, right? Too much data is there. And what you have to do is, see, fast changing is also there. Say some status is there, uh, then comment is there, another comment is there. It is continuously getting changed. Change means it is getting added, right? Not always uh, changing means modifying the data only. We can say it is getting added. Huh. It may be the case that it is getting changed continuously. Where you can say that? For that a particular example is like you can say uh, monitoring or you can say remote sensing is that from the sensors, say we are having continuous data. It may be changing continuously. Temperature, say 10.5, 10.6, 10.7, it's continuously changing, right? So if 
if the data is continuously changing then it is a bit difficult to present that particular data isn't it if you are having excel sheet okay we can represent it very easily using the visualization but if the data is continuously coming and you want to show that it will be a bit tough task isn't it by following the techniques data are converted to proper format and the techniques are say modulation and sampling digitization and coding file formats that is we can say that different file formats can be used data can be shared using non standard text files or existing standards like you can say csv or xml or any ml right simultaneous acquisitions and visualizations getting data from fb and make its visualization simultaneously you are getting from this account from that account from a uh, commands from status and many more things right the example we can understand how we want to visualize that okay get the features out of it then do the visualization data enhancement decide important aspects or features uh, do i need to have all the features no i don't want to have depends on a particular application isn't it we must somehow turn our raw data set into more appropriate representations and rich data sets data filtering or data enriching to tasks what does that mean extract relevant information that is extracting name address or less attendance data of a student that time marks of each semester are irrelevant and rich with high level information that supports a given task as for example medical data noise data removal enhancement of certain material data etc the input is raw data set whereas output is and rich enhanced data set see many a times whatever medical images we are having uh, they are actually the photo but still we may have to do some processing to make it clearer for medical processing right visual mapping visualization mapping what does that do once we have the needed data we may have downloaded and read whatever we have done we say that once we have the data available with us we must map it to the visual domain mapping function is needed that is we can say whatever is these are two data visualization these are our data set and db is data set of visual features you are having lot of data excel sheets are there but what we need for the data visualization i want to have the bar graph so i need to have the graph data that means uh, how many categories are there for each and every category how many uh, or you can say what should be the length of that particular bar right what should be color of that particular bar right that's what we have to decide isn't it so whatever data we are having that we need to convert to our data visualization features right comparison about mapping and rendering what is mapping that is convert invisible to visible representations rendering means simulates the physical process of lighting a visible that is 2d or 3d scene a picture the visual domain is a multi dimensional space whose axis or dimensions are 
those elements we perceive as quasi independent visual attributes such as shape position size color texture illumination and motion animated 2d or 3d shape rendering and d to 2d data are transformed to image data the rendering operation is the final step of the visualization process it takes the 3d scene created by the mapping operation together with several user specified viewing parameters such as the viewpoint and lighting and renders it to produce the desired image in typical visual applications viewing parameters are considered part of the rendering operation this allows users to interactively navigate and examine the rendered results of a given visualization indeed if the viewpoint changes but the 3d scene produced by the mapping stays the same all we have to do is render the scene a new with the new viewing parameters which is a relatively cheap operation see what do we mean to say here that is uh, let's say that i am looking at a particular man from the front side so what will be able to see is his face where i can see that nose is that lips are there ears are there eyebrows are there right eyes are there forehead shape is there his <clears throat> cheeks shape his chin right all the things we need to consider right if i see from the back side will i be able to see all these things obviously not isn't it will be able to see only his hand right for the face i am talking of okay if i see from the uh, cross view i'll be able to see a uh, few hands and you can say that will be able to see few things of of work is uh, eyes maybe say one eye or say two eye the way you have made the person crossed isn't it so what we mean to say is viewpoint changes then the picture will also be changed but 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 what we want to say is if viewpoint changes but the 3d scene produced by the mapping is the same all we have to do is render the scene a new with the new viewing parameters right it will be easier cheap operation right do not have to process all the things again we are having the picture let's say that we are having very simple one box and uh, if i uh, rotate it what should be there should i again process that picture or should i again get the data from it no you are having the idea right so if i rotate it i should be applying the mathematics for that and will be able to get the picture that will be there in that say 30 degree angle rotation 40 degree angle rotation right that will be easier operation or we can say cheaper operation types of visualization they are scientific visualization information visualization visual analytics right these are the major the types let's see what is scientific visualization we we'll see the photos but at least let's have the idea specifically concerned with the data that has a well defined representation in 2d or 3d space as for example from simulation mesh or scan structure data we are using seismic or medical data 
information visualization there we can say no inherent structure is there news or stock market top dressing movies or facebook connections for visual analytics what do we say use visualization to understand and synthesize large amounts of multi modal data audio video text images networks of people let's see the example of all these types of visualization we can understand that from visualization easily isn't it let's see the visualization it's a scientific visualization <clears throat> we can see the pictures here right we can visualize that okay we can visualize okay this type of information especially hmm. concerned with data that has a well defined representation in 2d or 3d space right you can see it here this is a little bit mass isn't it this is a uh, we can say scanner right through the scanner we are getting this particular image isn't it for information visualization we can see the images like this okay concerned with data that does not have a well defined representation in 2d or 3d space that is we can say it is having the abstract data visual analytics integration of interactive visualization with analytics techniques to answer a growing range of questions in science business and analysis making sense of multi modal data audio clips video photographs transcripts and many more right we can see them here modes of visualization let's see the comparison of it for a uh, visualization mode we can say they are major of three types that is we can say interactive visualization interactive story telling and presentation visualization modes right modes of visualization are they yes we want to see the comparison of all these three interactive visualization or oh, that means some interaction should be there isn't it okay now for that what features we are considering they are user interaction graphics rendering target and medium right these are the features we consider to compare the modes of visualization for that let's see for interactive visualization in that user interaction for that we can say user controls everything including data set for graphics rendering we can say it is real time rendering for target we can say individual or collaborators target our audience right medium is software or internet for interactive so interaction is that so we can say for user interaction user controls everything right including the data set which data set they want to see so that user controls that is for interactive visualization second one is interactive storytelling <clears throat> what does that mean for user interaction we can say it is having user can filter or inspect details of preset data set what about graphics rendering it is real time rendering for target it is mass audience because we want to see from the from the data some story we want to say right so that is what is interactive storytelling 
for that we can say mass audience is there for medium we can say it is internet or kiosk for presentation visualization we can say for user interaction it is user only observes for graphics rendering we can say it is pre computed rendering for target we can say colleagues or mass audience and for medium we can say it is slide shows or videos for applications of data visualization retail banking in that yes we'll be able to see what is the profit in this particular banking uh, that is a say for current account or for say <coughs> savings account or whatsoever things are there we can make the graphs charts and we can have the idea for government obviously for government hmm how many students have taken vaccine one and how many have taken vaccine two right the example we can say for insurance mm, for insurance policy that is of say 10 crores how many customers are there right you can see that how many means in the comparison we do not want to have the exact figure we want to have the comparison uh in 2010 it was only 5 persons were there in 2015 hmm, more people are there and now into 20 that is 2021 it is wow it is too good isn't it so that's what we can get that is a applications of data visualization healthcare and medicine healthcare um, oh when the vaccination was started i uh, you can say very few people very few people were going for the vaccination but now people are aware about the covid vaccination and we can say all people are taking the vaccination and almost all have finished that also right telecommunications mm, i am having the gap okay um till say january we are having the data where persons are calling only the indian people but now they are calling the foreign people right so we can say we are having the outliers we can understand that some problem can be there right so that is the application of data visualization transportation hmm what is the cost of transportation how much kilometer sorry how many kilometers particular trucks has traveled right so that's what we can see capital markets hmm the cost is increasing and decreasing every day so how much it is being increased how much it is being decreased where the market is going right the visualization is very important in this particular asset management that also the data visualization is that right so that's all for today